What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Velarde Show. This is a brand new show, and I have my very first guest here named Sarah J. She's an A&R, and she's placed a lot of records with some very known people. And uh, yeah, Sarah, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me, Velarde. Uh, I'm a producer manager. I've been in the game for 16 years managing producers and getting them placements. Um, I love to help new producers get their foot in the door. I think it's very important. So if you guys have beats or full songs, references, hooks, make sure that you send them to me and I can get them out for placement opportunities. That's cool. That's cool. And who, who have you placed records for? Um, I place records with Nipsey, Meek, French, Fab, Pusha T, um, Jadakiss, Jeezy, um, Kevin Gates, uh, Big Boy, Tori. I've been on all Tori's albums um, and many more. Yeah, those are some big names. What made you want to become an A&R? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I guess just my love for hip hop and just kind of my musical ear over the years, um, yeah. just listening to beats. Um, I've always had friends that were engineers, producers, A&Rs, and things like that. So the more I got involved into the beat game and shopping beats and stuff like that, I just kind of found my niche. And um, it just kind of worked, you know, so just trial and error, just experiencing different things over the years in the music game um, just really led me to where I am today. Yeah, that's awesome, Sarah. You know, we be talking. I, I see like you're you're hustling. There's this thing about the industry where it's hard to reach certain people, you know, when they're already getting established. Um, and I've been told from other producers, other people, it's really hard. So I've done the same thing in trying to create a place where people can, you know, feel open and get their questions answered, even if they're not big, because you never know. It might be right. the next big person in there. Right. Yeah, you just never know. And and it's like in the music game, like it's really musical chairs. So you could be up one day and then down the next. And so you just never know who's going to be in position. So it's just really good to treat everybody with respect, you know, um, on your journey in the music game, you know, because it's just going to help you out overall. Do you recommend producers that they go to the studio with the artists and actually like be in the mix? You know, what do you recommend? Is that better than just, you know, being all the way across the East coast versus the West coast when you're collabing with artists? Yeah, well, it's really difficult to get directly in the studio with a lot of these artists because a lot of artists, major artists, like they don't trust you guys. So they don't know you, you know, so you're not just going to get in with them. But I would say that after a few placements or two, they'll be more open to get in the studio with you. But in the meantime, I like to recommend producers to just book like a few hours um, of studio time in a major city like Miami, um, New York, Atlanta, or LA, mm -hmm. places where these guys record and leave the studio door open and people might walk in your session. You know, just being in the building and just showing up is going to put you at an advantage to where some producers like bedroom producers um, are just always at home. You know, they're not grinding, they're not out here, um, you know, in the mix or whatever. So it's going to be really hard to get access to these people so if you do book your own session and you control the session this is a great way to get in the building and to meet people and network you hear that guys that's really important so make sure that you're booking studio sessions and you you know really familiarizing yourself with those different studios in those big cities that people are in um, uh -huh. is it good to also build relationships like with the engineers too not just the artists because they're always mixing the songs Yes, no, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I've gotten a lot of placements through engineers and their DJs over the years um, because, you know, they're right in the studio, uh, you know, cutting vocals with these guys. And it's a great chance to really play your beats and to get people that are um, directly with the artists working with them mm -hmm. to get like a pack or two over. So can a producer get placements um, anywhere around the world? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, most definitely. Right. Like the last Tory Lanez record that I placed, uh, Who Needs Love, his single, um, it was a producer from Miami collaboration with uh, another producer from Korea. Wow. From Korea. Yeah. So it does not matter. You could live in Africa. You could live in Australia, wherever. Like, it does not matter. Yeah, yeah. I have I have some people that follow me that are in Australia, New Zealand and uh -huh. stuff. So that's good to hear. And yeah, I no. 
sure. these producers are like they're they're the next up when I put when they're at my producer showcase they're going crazy so and some of them are already following you I've I've already you know told them to follow you so nice I keep I telling I keep telling them like this this uh person that you know I know Sarah J she really got you know she she's the plug for the placement so um, appreciate it yeah so are there any networking sites that you recommend networking sites well there used to be like back in the day like who's looking lists and things like that that made it easier um but there's no real premier sites it, but if you do google uh like let's say in twitter search bar um you type in things like uh producer conference music showcase music seminar uh beat battle producer event and also if you on um, ig if you use some hashtags you might see some events pop up also looking at different um podcasts like producer grind or i standard anything ill minds doing he has a bunch of really dope events right. also um steel sound sessions by boys Buddha and grands they do a nice one um in boston and new york and then also the producer beat club podcast they also do some events but because of covid mm -hmm. things have slowed down a little bit but i think like back uh, maybe maybe in summer or whatever things might open up but um, also, if you're affiliated with ASCAP or BMI, there's also some really great expos that you can go to. And this is where you guys are going to bump into the music supervisors and publishers. Interesting. Yeah, so that's good. So once again, guys, she was saying that BMI and ASCAP are good places like for their seminars that they have uh, to go and bump into music publishers and, and supervisors, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're looking to get into sync licensing work. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I, I like uh, making music for television as well. Yeah, I mean, I used to be an actor, so I know exactly about the acting on the side of the, you know, with the camera. Oh, and you know what? I want to talk to you about doing voiceovers. So if you can also remind me in the DM about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate okay. that. Yeah. So what's your take on record deals as a producer? So record deals, like back in the day, you used to have like P&D deals, which are like production deals. But if you're not like a signature sound producer, like a Mustard or Mike Will or uh, maybe Murder Beat, somebody that has a household name that has proven countless hits after hits, right. uh, these guys are offered like small umbrellas underneath a bigger label like an Interscope or something like that because they have proven hits on the radio. So um, those kind of situations are going to come about once you just build your discography and, and just get your track record up in the meantime, you know, you just need to get those big records uh, before you get any of those kind of deals offered to you. Okay. So you need to place records first before you can. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I hope you guys understood that. Cause I didn't know that for at first um, you actually have to get placements before a record label is even interested in doing a deal with you. So yeah. That's, yeah, that's Any kind of administration or pub deal, they would want to see some kind of track record that you have some proven hits, you know, under your belt. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's really good advice. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Is the co-pub deal, would that even be the best route? Say if someone comes and offers you that? It just depends on each situation is different. You have to look at like the terms and agreement, see if it makes sense for you. You know, what are they offering? What are the splits? Um, you know, how long is it for? And just make sure everything is, is okay. Yeah. It's 100. <laughs> you ain't trying to get messed up, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any ways producers can connect with you if they want to get placements? Oh, yeah, definitely. So my email in my bio is always the current one. So you can either hit me up on my Twitter or my IG. I'm on Clubhouse. Everything is the same. SJ Manager all across the board. I'm also on Twitch. Um, I'm also coming out with a podcast soon. So I'm very easy, accessible. If you um, contact me about sending beats um, and just send beats over with your contact information, plain MP3s, and then I can get them out to the different projects that I'm always working on. Okay, cool. Yeah, guys, I'm going to put her Instagram information in the bottom of the description on my Instagram as well as my YouTube as well on the Velarde TV show channel and my main Velarde channel. Do you also offer advice to producers one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, I do. I do beat reviews, 30-minute consultations, which I go over everything from split sheets to how to get placements in depth. 
um, also um, leasing beats, uh, marketing yourselves, um, you know, places to travel to bump into people and networking and just different tips and advice on how to uh, further your career in the business. Wow. So yeah, guys, you can, you can get in with her one-on-one. -on -one. I've talked to her. Um, I actually did the beat review with her and I can be honest with you. It's really valuable. Um, I gained a lot from it. So I definitely recommend you guys go and check that out. Um, remember her information is going to be underneath this YouTube description and the Instagram description. A lot of producers, they are uncomfortable with waiting especially when it comes to placements. And I want to, what, what's your opinion on that? Oh, that's a great topic to talk about because I get so many producers that are frustrated, you know, and they're not like mean directly to me, but they just have things to say. They, they want my advice and they, and they want to tell me how frustrated they are with this person didn't hit them back. Like I had a guy today, he was like, you know, this artist, he keeps hitting me for beats, mm -hmm. but he never leaves email. And I'm like, okay, well ask him again. And then if he doesn't hit you, um, keep it pushing. There's so many other artists that you can contact, but I know that's like the part of the beat game that really sucks is the whole waiting game mm. it's like hurry up and wait you know what i mean so it's like you guys work really hard uh you know just producing and getting creative and, and that kind of thing and you have all the contacts and all the resources and things like that but then like the part of not hearing any feedback not hearing back right away is really like the ticker where you're just like oh, i hate this and there's been so many times over the years that i've wanted to give up and quit and all that but it's crazy that if you're just patient like you know, like overflow, you feel like an overflow and it's just like, it could be really dry. And then it could just be like raining overpour of phone calls and great news and all these things coming in. So those are the times where I'm like, you know what, I'm just really glad that I, you know, believe in myself and I keep going and I keep pushing and, and that kind of thing. And just finding that motivation, whatever motivates you, you know, sometimes it's collabing with other people you know if you're having writer's block um mm. reaching out to different people about like loops or sounds or or whatever getting some new you know just kind of inspiration maybe take a trip uh watching the movies i mean just keep it fresh so that you're always in that mind state you know of, of just creating it and keeping yourself um busy and active that's the main thing in this business is just keeping yourself busy you know having like so many things going on that you're not focusing on why this person didn't hit you, why you haven't heard back. Like, right. gotta really just build your network up really big so you're not focusing on those few couple people, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's that was really valuable. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, these artists, you know, I, from what I've heard, I know you know more, so, but these artists, <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're just going through beats all the time. Oh, I know. You know, and then you never know, like maybe later on they'll be like, Oh, this one, and then you know, you know. Next thing you know, like a beat you made like a year ago, you, you get played. So, you know, sometimes I'll like resend Meek beats that he hit me back on that he said they're coming out. Like I have a bunch of records coming out with Meek, but it's like mm -hmm. if you don't hear back for like you know three to six months, you might be like, okay, was he still using it? So I'll like reshot beats to some artists that told me that they're using certain thing, mm -hmm. um, and then also like these guys are on the road a lot. These guys have. ADD, they might be high, they might be drunk. So it's like they might record half a song and put it on the back burner and record 12 other songs and your song is on the back burner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to just, that's why I say you got to have a bunch of things going on at one time. So you're not just focusing on, you know, why this person did hit me. Like it's got to be like a constant grind of, you know, other things you have going on. So you're not getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, because definitely... if it's really for you, like you'll just keep going. Just like keep if this going. music game is really for you, this is how the week weed themselves out. Like there's just a million more producers waiting to take your spot. So right. if you get frustrated and burn out, there's you know, it's just like the NBA, a hundred in, hundred out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's thousands of other people. So what is gonna make you more solidified um in their eyes than yeah. the other person? So you yeah. just gotta keep making more beats. Definitely. Yeah. 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 And also working on your marketing and branding. Do you guys have business cards? Do you have logos? Do you have, you know, flash drives with your beats loaded up on it? What do you have that's visually appealing to other people that other producers aren't thinking about, you know, because these kind of things stand out. Mm -hmm. Anything that you can do different that like other producers aren't doing is going to make you stand out. Maybe some videos, you know, consistent content on your YouTube channel, building up your YouTube, your Twitch, 
all of that. So in terms of how producers should send emails to A&Rs, what's the right way and what's the wrong way to do it? Yeah, so email etiquette is really important. Like, um, I know that if you just write like a, a short kind of note um, attached with some beats soon after that, that's a great way to go. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to be that producer that uh, writes like a whole big paragraph you know about how you're 17 and you just started producing and you know and all your soundcloud links like they don't want to hear that so just something short and sweet to the point of like you know hey um you know james this is so and so and i'm just reaching out to see what projects you're working on um, i placed records with blah 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 and i attached her a few of my tracks and you guys always send stuff in mp3 format if you don't know the a and r in the beginning because if you send like we transfer links or dropbox mm -hmm. like you don't want to miss that opportunity of them not being able to open it because a lot of us don't use dropbox or um or uh what's the other one uh uh, Dropbox Google or, Drive uh, and all that stuff, right? Yeah, Google Drive. Oh, we transfers and all that. Yeah. So if you just do uh, regular MP3s, just a few, and don't flood them with like 30, 40, 50 beats if you don't mm -hmm. know them right away. Like mm -hmm. I always tell people, build a relationship first, and then you can, you know, start to send way more beats, you know, after you meet them. So Clubhouse, right? A lot of people have heard about it, but a lot of people haven't. And is it? Is the hype really real about you being able to go into Clubhouse and be able to uh, talk to all of these A&Rs and, and a bunch of music people, even artists or producers who even want to collab? Is it like really as, as hyped as people say? Yes, Clubhouse is a new app, you guys. Um, I believe you do have to have the iPhone because it's not for Android users just yet. But anyways, it's a really great app. Um, easy access to everyone, to lawyers, to a &Rs, to uh, major producers, major artists jump in there. Anyone from back in the day to new school producers, uh, new artists, you would be surprised. People are on there morning, noon, and night. I mean, there's times where I really just have to get off of there because I'm so busy listening to beats. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's people having discussions in there all the time. It, it never stops. But it is a really cool app that you guys should definitely check out because since, you know, you know, we're in COVID times, I believe it was developed so that people can really do a great job in their networking and things like that. Um, I will say that one thing that will really help the producers mm -hmm. and if you're an artist is if you purchase the iRig. Have you heard of that, Blardy, the iRig? No, what's that? Okay, so the iRig is um, this little device that you can purchase on Amazon or Best Buy, and I believe you plug it into your phone, mm -hmm. but it makes the music and your audio sound incredible. So mm -hmm. if you don't want to have like crappy sounding beats or music, you know, when you're in these rooms where you're able to play your music for other A&Rs and, and tastemakers, um, it's about like $30 and you can buy it online. It's called the iRig. So I would definitely recommend getting that too. All right. So thank you, Sarah J, for taking your time out to speak to all these producers here on my on my channel. I really appreciate your time. And by the way, guys, if you guys want to book a one on one appointment with uh, Sarah J, the a &R, boss lady, um, you can message her on her Instagram and I will drop her Instagram link in the description in YouTube and Instagram. And if you guys want to send if you. And if you guys want to send her beats, she has an email on her Instagram. You guys can send a beat. Remember, guys, don't send a whole paragraph about your life story <laughs> and don't um, only send MP3s to her. Please only send MP3s because she will not open them. And, you know, let's just be respectful to her as an A&R because she does this every single day. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Sarah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you yeah. so much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. Looking forward to staying in contact with you. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. Bye.